This is the first time I've turned on my voice recorder, so I'm going to be doing a small test on how long this lasts. So currently, I have an A-B schedule roster. I just turned everything on. All right, I'm going to go see if this is loaded on my computer, or my presets loaded. So I just went over an audio rehearsal. And some of the audio rehearsal is going over uh, my AB scheduling system. I actually have... Actually have... I, I actually have... This is like day three. It's been pretty successful so far, right? My, my run in with... Uh, let's see. My run in with my scheduling roster is day three. It's been pretty good so far. I'm going to probably try to edit it more. Right. I've, I've, I'm going to start adding some diagrams, charts, and stuff, maps, I think to my scheduling. It's useful. Um, everyone thinks you just use Notion. Um, I go follow Frank. You, you think you should invest in these things. I'm very skeptical of investing in some gear these days. That doesn't mean I shouldn't or should not invest in them. It's just the reality is when you don't have a budget, you don't really have a choice but to think about using this type of stuff. You gotta be creative. You gotta you gotta start thinking uh, where to go, right? Um, I don't like that actually. I really don't. I'm not one of those people that are super greedy. But the thing is, when you don't set up feedback loops for um, individual companies, when you don't set up business loops where you promise to help each other, right? If you don't like like a lot of those job requirements, right? It's so hard to find a job. I talked about this already, right? It's it's a feedback loop. You got to make sure when you you get a job, right? It's you you, you take the, the 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 first wave of jobs back then were always the shittiest, right? They had the most requirements, and it's assumed you get trained of them. In return, you start a business to, and then you shelve it and you give it smaller requirements. That is what's going on, and. So, and if you're wondering, and what ends up happening is you keep waving it out, right? You keep doing waves of jobs. You give, you give, you give smaller um, occupations with less responsibility so people can integrate better to society, right? It used to, back then, people used to actually gamify stuff. We, we invent a lot of uh, meaningless jargon and terminology because we can't explain what's going on. Right. That's what's going on. We we actually don't know what any of our old terms mean. That's why a lot of terminology is being invented. This is the problem I have with society. They don't want to explain anything, right? Feynman talked about this too, but he even wanted to complain about it. There were problems too, even in his society. He's like he's like, Well, we need to explain something so simpler that we can explain it to a five year old. I may have to repeat this again if the podcast doesn't work. I am trying to make sure this actually succeeds and functions. By the way, go ahead and buy this buy a Bang Energy drink. It's always on Amazon. I actually don't know if you want to buy an Amazon or Walmart. Walmart's probably better. One of the best sites I actually go to to get shoes actually is... It's actually... I don't know if this is a good... I probably should see if I can get a refund if it doesn't work. All right, let's go find out. Uh, I'm not. I don't always have time to test stuff. I have a lot of stuff to do. All right, but anyways, this is my first time. We'll see what happens. So I have a phone chest. I have a mobile harness. I'm. I'm actually looking at getting a music box someday. Juke box, I think. Maybe. We'll see. I have to look at my budget. There's always a discussion about budget. Every time, I, I always make sure if I ever get hired by an employer, assuming I ever get a corporate job, I always give a budget, right? I don't know if anyone does that anymore. I haven't seen any spreadsheets. Like, normally what I would do in the modern days, I'd make the budget public. I look up the expenditure costs. Like, the, I, I see the Q2, Q3 financial reports. People back then used to do this. They used to be transparent. Here's, here's the money, customer. I have like a million dollars in the bank. I want to see if there's any. I'm going to go look this up. Let's see business expenditures. Business. Let's see if Microsoft has anything. I'm kind of curious to see if anyone has a business budget that's public. 
like a public traded company business budget, right? Because they used to do that. Uh, they were called trade deals for a reason, right? Right, and they, they were transparent. There's nothing. I don't know why. People don't like talking about money, period. Well, that's a problem with society. China doesn't do it transparently, but they do talk about it transparently in some manner. It's not an insider, by the way. I, I, a lot of this is supposed to be stuff you get when you purchase insider trading information. That should not be the case. This is very dysfunctional. Now, even then, they're not even playing about it. That's problematic. They should be what they should be talking about for the company are three types of budget: the balance, the surplus, and the deficit budget. They should be talking about that for each individual private company. I don't really. This is why I'm not. I don't really like. Um, I, I I hate being that guy, but I, I just don't really like Americans when it, because they don't talk about money. Like, what worth are you to anyone? Because the whole world revolves around money. You guys made it so. So how can you keep up with the Jonases if you can't even chat about your budget? No one's actually thinking. How, how do you get anything? How do you get a Marxist utopia that I, I dream of so much every night when I sleep? When you can't even talk about the budget. Where, where the fuck's anything, right? <laughs> People do... The reason why we have these terminologies is because we just don't understand our old terms at all. What, 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 if we understand these three modes of... If we understand our surplus deficit and our deficit budget, we can understand our modes of operation, right? I don't understand... And, and it all starts with looking at our sales receipts, right? It just you, you look at these people... As social justice, where you just look at a lot of the normal normies, whatever you want to call it. Normal people, you're just like, huh. I don't know what you might call that algorithm works, but what about my budget? Everything devol revolves around cash, right? Well, if you can't prevent, pre present anything, you want to know why the no budget rule is there? That's called the deficit budget of operation. Here's the problem. You aren't putting any comparisons. Programmers used to do comparisons. Did you know that? So I'll give you an example of an ancient programmer. So Germany, World War II. They created, a, the modern day programmer back then was someone who created a search engine using a library system. You can create a Google search engine search by index with, a, with, a, uh, with just a library. I saw him cracked a while back. Yes, you can. You know what that was? You know what a programmer was back then? A bookkeeper. They did multiple jobs, right? They did cryptography. They did multiple forms of intelligence, right? Did more than what programmers today did. And the Americans, because they weren't that smart whatsoever, they did not... Um, and Americans back then were a little more honest. I, I've never seen anyone really playing about anything these days. We probably have to go back to ancient, ancient Greece to see anyone playing. Right? I, I, they drank whiskey and stuff, but at least they were playing. At least you could rely on them. To, like, do something for you when your life depends on it. That's, that's what matters in the end at the end of the day. You can have all these modern gizmos and gadgets all you want. But you will always have situations where your life's in danger. It's always going to be the older generation, if I had to compare the two. That's going to save your ass. And, and this, is, this is the problem. And people just, just slack off, retire. They don't really want to help the rich. Everyone wants to show each other, right? Ever, ever saw any of these cash-to-play scandals in video games? That's a microcosm of a bigger geopolitical issue. Right? No one wants to pay each other anything, not even the politicians. That's why there's stimulus, economic stimulus bills, so it's harder for politicians to get money, too. So what ends up happening is they have to get money elsewhere from China, from these foreign interest groups. It, 
yeah, is these foreign interest groups just keep getting funds and they keep funneling stuff. Yeah, people do not like the truth whatsoever for, for this topic. Right? China pays them. It's not America. China is government's daddy. Right? And the politicians that I, I keep telling people, you, you, I used to not want to say this, and I still don't. I don't even want to say it directly. When you don't pay politicians anything, which is politicians get zero dollars from America, by the way. No one's getting six figures. That's why you're allowed to cheat. It was implied already. It was implied you're allowed to get foreign donations because no one was paying politicians anything. So this was a mandate, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, that where politicians have to work free of charge when they get elected since Franklin Delano Roosevelt took office. It was part of an emergency procedure. It's not a directly stated uh, bill, but it's socially implied. So you have to get bought off. There's no way you can't sell out. And the joke is you get a salary. And, and the joke is China, right, made a gambit because they're realizing, well, no one really wants to pay the politicians anything. Yeah, this is very complex, right? No one wants to pay the politicians anything. They don't want to pay six figures. That's just put, listed on paper, but there's no money, actually. Why? Why, why would you be loyal to America? If they're not paying you anything. This is a geosities problem. Politicians were going the way of geosities decades back, right? That's why there's jokes about fireside chats. He was talking about the fact that politicians were already fired. Either It was either Roosevelt or Delmar. I don't know which one, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a passive-aggressive joke. Right? You know what the public's like? We don't want to pay you politicians because you're not connecting with us more personally. It's passive aggressiveness. I don't really like talking because they don't know how to apologize. And, and that's why it's not worth being honest in the office because people don't know how to apologize or talk to each other, period. They don't even want to talk about anything. They're getting worse every year. I don't remember. I think people lost their shit since COVID-19. Yeah, people, people have... You know, what a lot. I don't care. I just do my work and I leave. I don't think people say what they mean. So if you keep living in that society, it's no longer worth following the rules, right? Because rules depend on people saying what they mean. I know, America, big idea. If you want rules to work, you have to say what you mean. No shit. Right? Wow or fool. I don't know what, what any of these terms mean, by the way. It's just from a society that doesn't know what the hell their ABCs. So, so deficit budget, which is no budget, is you go aggressive. You go full-on marketing aggressive. It's not, it's not what you think it means. It, is not, it does not mean create more complex programming. So deficit budget means you work free of charge. 90 plus hours. Or something like that. Where this is obviously a negotiation anchor. Where you go all out, right? And you use the budget to create your own feedback loop. You don't necessarily have to do it. So the so so the programmers do door to door sales. No one wants the no budget line. What you want to be in is either balanced or surplus, right? Right. This is in code. Um, there's another terminology for this. I, I'm inventing terminology because I'm trying to describe something else. There's three methods of operations for big businesses or any business. Well, deficit is like, well, you door-to-door -door sales. You try to get force these customers to, to buy a unit. You, you use the company's budget to, like, kind of bribe them to buy other products later down the line, right? Right? You're doing construction bids, basically. That's what no budget means. Balanced budget is where you want to be. Hey, I, I work my normal work hours. I got my inflow of customers, right? I'm, I'm, I'm understaffed when it comes to making programs or whatever, right? And that's normal, right? I, I have a normal normal amount of work plus, workforce surplus. That That is the... 
That's not the ideal one. There's plenty of promotional positions, but that's because you're understaffed. The joke is you're doing more work for like you're getting shorted because you're doing more responsibilities, but you're 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 uh, charged way below the market rate. You always want to be at balanced. So people who say I don't have a budget, right? It's just just people being really stupid right now. And I love my fellow Americans, right? Now you see where the bullshit is. As an SJW. I love my fellow Americans. I, I'm, you know, I, I, every time I was an SJW, I, I join because of flexibility. It's just a lot of, uh, I, I do not pick a side. I pick ideas that work. What ideas? We don't have any. Deficit budget. Is not is is nowhere one no one wants to be there, but that's where every CEO has to go right. No budget. No budget means you actually don't have a budget, right? And, and it can also mean you do have a budget, but you need to put all the marketing. That's how you make money. Money is not made by your 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 performance rate in the workplace, right? It's made by your performance rate for sales. How many customers can like how many units can you sell? So a lot of these things that I'm doing at the risk of my job is doesn't matter for moving up performance rate at least if in a functioning company how fast you are in the warehouse really doesn't matter it's important when you have an inflow of customers but what's truly important when it comes down to it is can you get any customers to buy your stuff that's all that matters nothing else matters how slow how fast work doesn't matter if you can get people to buy your stuff, you get beer buddies that can buy your stuff, be committed to buying stuff from this company for like an infinite amount of time, for a finite to infinite amount of time, that is where value is. Right? A lot of warehouse rate doesn't matter. Now, don't get me wrong, I like keeping those people employed, right? If I were CEO of any company. But we have to remember what matters at the end. It's whether the customer actually stops fibbing on their purchases, right? Stop hesitating. That's the right term. I would call it fib fibbing because it's funny. No, it doesn't. None of it matters. Rate matters. Now, now rate matters in terms of learning stuff for school faster, right? So... If you can learn how to do a task faster, you can use those skills. It only helps you when it comes to like flexibility, right? Learning how to learn skills really quickly. That's all that matters when it comes to warehouse performance metrics. It should be a measure of how fast you learn stuff in the long run. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. And rate, all it does is it gives you a certain degree of job security. That's the whole point. You keep it getting employed. But you have to do more. Otherwise, you're kind of limited. Yeah, and like I said, I'm keeping this on right now. I'm going to see if this works. And once this works, I will who you went. Yeah, some some stuff, like picking. I, I did a podcast on this a while back. It's kind of fascinating. And I did picking a while back. It's it's the only one of the only fields outside the education, you know, truck driver and stuff makes money. I'm not offended by anyone. I just know people complain about picks. Managers do, too, by the way. I'm not a guy who complains. I do complain when they take it further than the workplace. Right? And then when they annoy me, like, outside of work, that's kind of when I get too annoyed. And they don't admit that they're, they're, they're poking me. Um, People outside who've heard about me, right? People should inform me first, right? I don't like people who say uh, hi by just follow by following you. It's just annoying. I don't bother anymore. And I, I always start meetings. I don't even care about it. What type of mind feels I explode? Anyways, I'm just saying, we, we if we're talking about no budget, people should know what they're talking about. No one really wants to because I've seen a lot of VPs. They're like, I don't want to take responsibility for anything, right? 
job career fairs. At least they're videos. I haven't met them in person. No one really wants to take responsibility. That's kind of the problem, right? The, the first question you should ask whenever people present you any sales pros or anything is, does anyone want to take responsibility for anything? At the cost of myself. Making money. Let's start with, let's, I want someone who can take infinite responsibility. I want them to say what they mean, right? It's the same thing. Think about it. So after that, if it doesn't happen, you leave. I, I'm sorry. Look, nothing works without that. There's a lot of VPs out there that don't have value if they don't, they're not willing to play that game, right? Forget about what they learn in school. It just doesn't work. That's why school is such a... Uh, school is not a cash grab, but society has made it such, right? Because it's very hard... To, because we live in a society that doesn't want to pay politicians anything. At least from what I understand from the paperwork. Right? So how, how, how can you get a business? You can't start a business. You can't do shit. Right? So your only option is to get employed by the employers who established their wealth at the right circumstances at the right time decades ago. Which are the Fortune 500 companies. Some of these small businesses that, that get established are not really new small businesses, if that makes sense. Right? They were sort of derivatives, right? Mathematical derivatives or like shoot-offs of some of the more ancient dynasties, right? Right? The ancient 500 companies. I hate talking about that. They just got, uh, they didn't get lucky. Okay, yeah, you can say they got lucky, right? Hard work doesn't really mean as much as you think it does. It helps. It creates opportunities. See, hard work creates opportunities, but you need to seize them. Yeah, and that's kind of what life is about, right? It's like, uh, because at the end of the day, hard work means nothing if you cannot get people to buy stuff from you. Right? Hard work is independent of that. Some people can work hard for 50 years, get no customers, no economy starts. Right? If politicians are all paid zero dollars, how do you expect a business to form, right? There's so many uh, indicators that we're not purchasing anything legitimately from anyone anymore. So China's deal is they pay the politicians because they used to be paid trillions. They, 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 get, they cash in, right? They get the discount deal. And it was already implied that the government, like I said, is the, the American populace's main parent, backup parent. Right? They decide indirectly which, which units get purchased, which don't. How did they figure this out? Um, they learned from communist Russia, right? Back during the Soviet Revolution. So communism, um, and as an SJW, I'll talk about, the way it was implemented, it was mainly used as, as a way to extract resources from Russia. Because it's centralized. So the real communism was tried in the United States. It's indirect influence, right? It's all indirect. So, you, so the government it acts as a decentralized or centralized private company because all companies are centralized in structure. Because Americans just didn't want to purchase. They didn't want to think anymore, right? Ever wonder why Epstein's popular? Because people don't want to think anymore. They just want to surrender their free will. They want to have the freedom to lose their shit in front of people. So the big joke about Epstein is that none of the women really wanted to think about what Right? They, they got all attracted by Epstein because he, he, he offered them an escape from being rational. What he offered was rationality to some extent. And, and this applies to the political world at large. He is a product of the fact that Americans don't want to pay people jack shit for anything. People have evaded that reality for a while. Right? So Epstein is the bad boy. And his job is to just 
um, he his job is to basically. Um, so if you're wondering why he got cults, his job is to present the women that he has a better world. So it's not so he dick fagged around. So that's why he got killed. That's all it is. Um, drug running. A lot of the women wanted to go into it. His goal was to make sure they lived as long as possible. He picked certain women. And yes, it does involve beating the crap out of guys. Because women love that adrenaline rush. At least he targeted specific... It's like marketing. You just target specific people. Because if you could get people in a cult, you get loyal customers. Why do you think they all circled around Epstein? Other than the fact that he could kill them, of course. People just circle around each other. We just live in a world where a society where we all circle around each other. And yes, yes, yes. Epstein is a very, uh, uh, I, I hate saying this, but if you can get a cult, you can get actual customers. That's what really rich people saw, right? There were no actual customers. Right? The first wave was turned by the U.S. government. You could actually get actual legitimate small businesses to run for once. Because if you're in a quite cult, right, you could be loyal no matter what, right? You'll buy stuff. You could have been the next Moloch, right? So you actually had stuff happening. There was legitimate economic activity. That's in what, I, what I define that as, like, independent of the U.S. government being the first customers, of course. It's like, holy shit, we can actually start businesses, right? Politicians could actually be paid by the American citizen. There's hope. It's a new hope. Right? And people complain about foreign donations, but the reality is no one was paid anything by America. For the last 100 years, maybe? 80 years? People don't pay people anything. That explains so much about the society. I was like wondering why everyone j just pretends like whatever I say sounds crazy. Now I know, it's because people just dick around. This, is, this also makes me feel smart, of course, but it's not no prize. Yeah, just look around. Um, people like to feel egotistical at any cost. Yeah. Let's look this up. Yeah, um, there, if anytime you say no budget, um, uh, if, you, if you really uh, are serious about that, I want to see some sales proposals of three modes of different business operations. Doesn't matter which department you're from. You need to go. Come on, let's let's see some sales rules, cause uh, or some charts, diagrams, supply chain stuff. Let's go all the way. Otherwise, there's no nothing serious about it. Anyways, I'll end this off. I'll talk about this later.